You're listening to The Ashley Lachlan Show. I'm Ashley, and I'm here to help you build a wildly successful and profitable business on social media. I created my own rags to riches story and built a seven figure business on social media in the midst of motherhood. And my passion is helping other female entrepreneurs do the same. I'm sharing my best marketing, mindset, and sales strategies to help you love the process and scale your business to six figures and beyond. Let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode two. Today we're talking sales and what you should really be selling on social media in order to actually make sales. I'm going to walk you through the mindset you need for selling on social and how to get over the fear of doing it and the three things you should actually be selling and this will surprise you. Before we take a deep dive into sales, I have something that will undoubtedly complement this episode and help you slay the selling game. And this episode just so happens to be sponsored by it. The Social Sales Content Bundle, literally everything you need to create compelling, scroll-stopping content that converts followers into customers. Headlines, calls to action, sales psychology, my proven captions and calendar to turn your posts into profits. Check it out in the show notes and take your social media selling game to a whole new level. Alrighty, let's dive in. First, let's talk mindset. There are two mindset shifts you need to make. The first mindset shift is embracing sales. I want to ask you, what do you think of when you hear the word sales? Maybe you feel icky, sleazy. You definitely don't want to be salesy. Girl, I feel ya. When I first started my online business, I always told people, I'm in sharing, not selling. I don't sell. I just share and then people buy. That made me feel better about what I was doing, but in reality, it was hurting my bank account because there's a big difference between sharing and having people tell you, you're so inspirational, and selling and having people say, oh my God, where do I buy? How do I join? The first thing you have to do is get comfortable with the act of selling. Selling is not a bad thing or a taboo thing. Think of all the things you sell in a day. You sell a new dinner idea to your family, a movie to your family on movie night, a new bag or a fancy item to your spouse, a chore to your kid. When you embrace selling and you know that selling is a natural part of life, it's something you do all day, every day, you can master it. If a doctor diagnoses you with an illness and tells you about the medication that can cure it, that doctor doesn't feel salesy. When your dishwasher stops working and the repairman tells you about the pump that needs to be replaced, he doesn't feel salesy. Selling is simply illuminating the solution to a specific problem or need. So you have to view your work in that same lens. Your customer has a problem and you have the solution. You have an obligation to share it with them, to sell it to them, because you know it will fix their issue or it will fill a need that they have. Now back to episode one, if you have unwavering belief in what you, ha- what you offer, you won't feel salesy. You'll be thrilled to help your client or customer with what they need. You'll know they'll love it and they'll be thankful for it. Now, I know a big issue is feeling bad for taking money from people. How many of you have just given something away for free because you feel bad actually charging money? Well, this is definitely a female issue, in my opinion. I feel like we are naturally people pleasers who want to help others, and we feel bad for charging people money. But you gotta put food on the table, you gotta pay your bills, and guess what? People want to pay you. I guarantee Target doesn't feel bad charging you for the $300 of stuff in your cart. Target knows you want it and you need it. And so you have to make that same mindset shift and get comfortable with giving people what they want and what they need 
in exchange for money. The second mindset shift is providing so much value that you don't feel salesy. If you are showing up every day and saying, buy this from me, join me, then yeah, that's icky. But if you're showing up and you're providing free tips, free value, and then strategically presenting your offer, you won't come off as salesy. So if you're in the beauty business and you sell shampoo, what free hair tips or tricks or tutorials can you provide so that you gain your audience's trust? If you're in real estate, what selling or staging or pricing tips can you provide so that when your ideal client is looking for a realtor, they come to you? When you provide hella value without expecting anything in return, you earn your audience's trust and then your pitches are better received because your audience is now like, wow, I learned so much from her already. Imagine what she'll provide when I actually become a client or a customer. So to recap that first point, you want to get comfortable with sales. You want to stop fearing it. You have to understand that it's natural. And you have to be intentional with providing value. That will gain your audience's trust so that they naturally want to buy from you. And now that leads me to the second point of this episode, which is being intentional with what you are actually selling. The most common mistake I see business owners make is selling the product instead of the solution. Let me say that again. Selling the product instead of the solution. That is the number one mistake. No one cares about the product itself. What people really care about is what that product will do for them. What problems will it fix? What emotions will it evoke? What benefits will it provide? So instead of focusing on selling your actual product, there are three things you need to be intentional about selling. Number one, the solution. What problem does your product or service solve? Number two, the emotion. What emotions will your ideal client avatar, your ICA, feel after using your product or service? And number three, the benefits. What results will they experience? So here's one of my favorite examples that I once heard. People don't buy a one-inch drill bit because they're excited about the drill bit. They buy it because they're excited to hang up a shelf, which will then allow them to arrange all their books and knickknacks on the shelf, which will then make their office look professional, organized, and inviting which will then make them feel good and allow them to be more productive. So instead of focusing on the actual drill bit, the salesman needs to focus on what that drill bit will actually do and how it will make the customer feel. So first is the solution. We have the problem. The customer has an unorganized office, a shelf sitting on the floor, stuff everywhere, The solution is the drill bit will allow the shelf to be installed. Allow the office to get more organized. Now, what's the emotion? Well, the customer currently feels stressed and overwhelmed with the mess. The drill bit will make the customer feel accomplished and excited about hanging the shelf and getting the office organized. What are the benefits? Well, the customer can now be more productive since the office is organized. The space promotes increased productivity. So do you see how instead of focusing on the drill bit, we're focusing on the solution, the emotion, the benefits of what that drill bit will actually provide. Another example for those of you in health and wellness Instead of explaining every ingredient in the supplement you're trying to sell or every workout that comes with your program, you want to focus on the transformation your client will experience. How will they feel in a month after using that supplement? Will their bloat be gone? Will their cravings be gone? Will they be down to one cup of coffee instead of a whole pot because they are waking up with so much natural energy? 
Will their pants be looser so they don't have to unbutton them every time they sit down? Will they feel sexier and more confident in the bedroom? Women make purchases based on emotion. And this is why it's so important to niche down and to really understand your ideal client avatar and her pain points, as I talked about in episode one. Another example, if you know your client is struggling with hair loss, you don't want to ramble on about the bottle of shampoo you're selling. You want to paint the picture of how she will feel when she notices less hair in the drain, when she has to upgrade to thicker hair ties because her strands aren't just growing, they're getting thicker. How she's going to feel when she can go out in public without worrying about people noticing her bald spots. If you're selling skincare and you know your ICA is struggling with melasma, dark spots on her face, you don't want to focus on the cream you're selling or the company you're associated with. You want to call out your ideal client's pain points in an enticing way. So your headline, the first line of your post might say something like, embarrassed by those dark spots on your face and crying over the 10 concealers you bought to hide them, I feel you, mama. I was there too. And then you share your story or one of your customer stories of how that product faded those pesky spots. You want to paint the picture of how your ideal client won't be stressing over whether someone is looking at her mouth or at her dark spot mustache when she's talking. You're going to highlight and paint the picture of how she'll be able to ditch all of the concealers And she'll be able to feel confident without any makeup on. So you want to collect testimonials or before and afters. This is so important. This is called social proof. And it's sometimes what gets people off the fence. So I recommend having a folder in your Google Drive with screenshots of photos, as well as a document of testimonials. Anytime I get a message that says something, you know, they loved whatever they bought, I copy and paste it into this Google Doc. And then I tap into that and I use it from time to time. Another great strategy that I highly recommend is creating a highlight on your Instagram page with testimonials and before or afters, depending on what industry you're in. So that anybody who comes to your page can click on that highlight and they can see other people's testimonials, other people's before and afters, they have that social proof. You can include yours in there as well, especially if you're just getting started. So to recap, stop trying to sell your product or service or company. The thing doesn't matter as much as the solution matters. People aren't buying the thing, they're buying the solution to their problem. They're buying the emotions they'll feel, the benefits they'll experience. No one gets excited for a tube of toothpaste, right? They get excited for the whiter teeth they'll be flashing. So every time you go to make a post or do a story, ask yourself if you are focusing on the thing or the product or the service you're offering, or if you're doing that thing justice by selling the solution your ideal client has been looking for. Are you selling the emotions that they're going to feel and experience? Are you transporting them to that day? Are you selling the benefits that they can experience and expect? That is what's going to get them off the fence. So to recap everything in this episode, first, you got to work on your mindset and you have to fall in love with the art of selling. And along with that, provides so much value to your audience that buying from you or joining you is a no-brainer. They are chomping at the bit to give you their money and to work with you. Second, stop selling the product and start focusing on the solution, the emotion, the benefits. That's what you actually want to be selling. So folks, that is a wrap on episode two. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love for you to take a screenshot. Tag me at Ashley underscore Lachlan. Tell me what you thought of the episode. I'd love to hear any requests that you have. And I will catch you later. Now go out there and make some money moves. Oh.